This is my brand new Project M four wheel camper. And if you've been watching the videos, you can see just from what's in the frame right now that it looks completely different from the last time you guys saw it. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's episode because there is a lot in store. With the hundreds of different options out there for a new camping rig, a lot brought me to this camper and why I wanted a Project M. It was completely customizable and bare bones on the inside, but even though it was bare bones, it still had everything you could possibly need to camp comfortably and even for a long time if need be. The goal for this build was to put my skills to the ultimate test and see what I'm capable of. So without further ado, the first three days we spent framing out the entire kitchen area. process was truthfully one of the worst because all I did was just sit back and stare at the camper for hours. It would have taken me maybe a couple of hours to finish all the framing, but I kept rethinking every single little step because I wasn't fully sure of how I wanted to go about the build and you need to know before you start framing because it's one of the most important parts. I'm gonna do some voiceovers so I can kind of bring you guys along with and explain things just better. Enjoy the rest of the build, things get crazy, a lot goes wrong, and hopefully maybe you guys learn a thing or two. M maybe not, I don't know, but enjoy. <laughs> I'll see you guys in a little bit. Finally, after three days of framing, I wanted to make the two by fours, which I know is a little bit dramatic to use a two by four in a situation like this, but just be extra cautious, I used two by fours and I ended up staining all the two by fours just to make them look a little bit nicer and give it more of a rustic look to them. Just the little things here and there make these builds come out a lot better in my opinion. Once that was over, my draw slides that I ordered online came in, so the next step was to put in the draw slides. I got these draw slides. They took forever to come in because nowhere near me sells 10 inch draw slides except for Amazon. So they just came in. 10 inch is very hard to come by. The smallest that they have at any hardware store for hundreds of miles near me is a 14 too long actually maybe barely too long but it would be too long so we got 10 all right this will be the draw oh my god yeah honestly could have went for a 12 probably but they still didn't even have 12 near me i did order some that are 12 as well but uh they didn't they haven't showed up so I grabbed some extra plywood that I had from a previous build and just used that and built a box and then painted it really quickly to match all the stain on the 2x4s. And then we installed it and made that our draw so it was super easy and simple and I just used a nail gun to make everything kind of go together seamlessly and then used a little bit of wood glue as well so it's a super strong box and I don't have to worry about anything. the last few holes doesn't look like much yet but you just wait 
At this point, I pivot and decide to start working on my countertop. I have yet to talk to you guys about this countertop. I ended up finding someone on Facebook Marketplace and I dragged Lila along with me to come and pick it up. And I wanted to find a really nice piece of black walnut that I can spend a bunch of time on and turn into something really, really cool. There was a few things that I definitely couldn't do alone, so I texted my vocational school teacher from high school, Mr. B, and he was totally cool with helping me. So I showed up to his shop where I went to school. Very weird to be back there. But he's an amazing guy and he helped me get a straight edge on this piece of black walnut. Kind of steered me in the right direction and was also super kind to let me use his epoxy as well. Because I really wanted to preserve the live edge on this slab of wood. Because I think it adds a ton of character. I spent two days straight pouring epoxy into every single crack and crevice of the live edge to give it a lot more structural sound and make sure that it's super solid and it's not gonna crack and crumble over time. After those two days, I of course gave the stuff back. Shout out Mr. B, love that guy with my whole heart. We can finish the rest by ourselves. But now we had to cut it to length. We did have our straight edge, but I had to cut it to length and I was kind of nervous. I've never cut a piece of wood this thick before and it kind of went as expected. There's snow on the ground but it's not cold enough to ice fish. But all the bodies of water have a thin layer of ice on it, which means you can't open water fish it, and you definitely can't ice fish yet. Look at the snow everywhere. But I think I found the perfect alternative, so let me talk to you guys about today's video sponsor, Fish On. Fish On is a 3D realistic fishing game, perfect for people like me and you. You don't even have to leave the comfort of your own home and you can get hundreds of different fish species and still have the same fun and thrill. My favorite part is how lifelike it is. It allows me to fish all my dream fishing spots that I've always wanted to go. And let's be honest, sometimes you really don't have time to make it to the water to go fishing. But with Fish On, there's exquisite fishing ground where it allows players to experience exciting and thrilling fishing duels anytime, anywhere. And it's not so much like a video game. Their gear is super, super detailed. For example, their rods are designed for if you're either freshwater or saltwater fishing in the game because in real life you're not using a freshwater rod in a saltwater fishing scenario and neither will you in the game. You will have different fishing locations from tier 1 to tier 4. Some of the gear even have certain perks like the chance of catching one of the boss fish or an even heavier saltwater fish or you have the technology to build your own gear to catch the biggest fish. There's also this mode and it's called dual mode. So here you're gonna be able to compete with another opponent for three minutes on a randomly selected map. And of course a suitable gear setup would be helpful, but ultimately whoever catches the most and biggest fish with the highest score is gonna win. I'm literally competing as I'm in the mountains right now. But if you want something a little bit more relaxed, you can choose to play the tournament mode, providing a closer to real life fishing experience, allowing the players to feel the playability and depth of this online fishing game. These can last for several hours and can be played against people around the world. So sit back and relax. <laughs> Your fishing points are gonna be ranked and added up. But just remember that only the largest fish and the target can be scored. So the higher your rank, the greater the rewards are. You can also level up by fishing and unlocking different locations. Like the world's 12 most famous sites, such as the Amazon River, the Pacific Ocean, Caddo Lake, and just a bunch more. Go to download the game Fish On to experience the realistic fishing inside the game. You can click the link in my description box, so make sure to use my exclusive link because this will help you get an extra gift package in your in-game email box. Thank you so much to Fish On for sponsoring today's episode. I am freezing. I'm going to go cuddle in bed and play my fishing game because I'm not going out there. So thank you for sponsoring today's video. Now back to today's episode. I don't know, I guess it just didn't like the battery. Here we go.
<laughs> it's not strong enough. It, it just keeps shutting off. did it just Jesus barely somehow it turned out to be a straight cut though with no like divots inward I don't know <laughs> I don't know how that happened um, you know it's a, it's a pretty big thick and large piece of wood but I mean I don't understand why it just had such a hard time it I know it's that thing is not powerful enough Next was, of course, adding a bunch of layers of poly, but I needed to do something else. Of course, there's so much left to do, so I pivot again. Next is to start working on the main portion of the actual kitchen that you're going to see when you open up the tailgate. I had a brilliant idea, or what I thought was a brilliant idea, to use this metal and then cut a bunch of pieces of wood and line them up perfectly to kind of outline the metal and it looked really cool uh the vision in my head the execution i wasn't a hundred percent pleased with which i'm happy that i ended up changing my mind because looking at this footage now it looks nothing like it did in my head and i'm really happy uh that we ended up changing it but we ended up spending maybe six hours or more working on this portion of the build and yeah it just didn't work out and that's all right we ended up just kind of scrapping it but yeah just not my finest piece of this build you guys will see what ends up happening but let's just say this didn't last too long well, we have a little bit of a hiccup in the project, and it's time to address it. I, personally, oopsies, absolutely hate, hate that. I, I don't like it at all, and it sucks to say, because I put so much time and effort into you know, cutting out the metal, buying the metal, getting the right metal. To me, it just, don't love it yeah I think it's time time to rip it apart sadly I finished all the framing and ended up painting the first coat of the black paint and now it was time to work on the teak wood sink countertop that I've been kind of working on on the side and the first thing that I had to do after of course adding poly and a bunch of protective coats on this piece of wood was getting the perfect cut of the round sink that we purchased.
perfect, dead centered, nice. Now what I'm thinking, take this. <laughs> this is stupid. Okay, now technically this string should be should be should be good so four four inches perfect ah yeah no that that didn't like fully really really work um Hmm. Dang it, why did that not work? I won't be talking too much throughout the whole plumbing process on these voiceovers, but I just want to warn you guys that I went through a lot to successfully have this sink working. We went through a lot of, um, you know, didn't get, yeah, we, we struggled to figure it out. Let's just say that. But yeah, sit back, relax, and enjoy. I did do a lot of research, uh, but the sink that I have is an unusual size drain. So nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, was sold in stores. It all had to be purchased online because it's such an odd dimension. So after purchasing some stuff online, it all came in and then we could proceed. But it was honestly probably over a week of me trying to dial this in and get it figured out because I've never done plumbing before. So enjoy the absolute struggle bus that I was on. I did try doing plumbing with the black sink, our original sink, didn't work. So I guess this isn't my first take. It might not even fit, which is the funny part. Oh my god, it fits. <laughs> Who would have thought? Lovely. I'm gonna attempt to show you guys step by step how I'm doing this because I can't find anything online very helpful. I got this camper drain. I'll try to make an Amazon uh, list so you can click the Amazon list and see everything that I bought. But this goes on this. Let's do it. All right, I think I have to disconnect all this first. Unscrewed that. Now we put this piece on. So now that um, we got that figured out, I just loosened everything back up. Plumber's putty. This is apparently like one of the most important steps. Well, not the most important, but a very important step that you should take. And this whole container was, I think, three bucks. So it's worth it. You take your putty. This is what all the videos online said. You just make it like kind of a snake so it will fit, for my case, my two inch fitting. Tighten that up with the adjustable wrench. Whoa, all right. I'm gonna pull this. Water is going to start going. Let's see if it's waterproof. <clears throat> as much as I don't want to do this, I'm, I'm underneath here. I'm going to pull the drain, see where it's leaking from. It 
so it's leaking from the drain the black like drain piece that's so frustrating though that's so frustrating i did see a couple of reviews saying that um some people were like oh my god it works so great and other people were like wow this thing sucked um and it leaks so i guess it does leak i'll silicone it and then it, I, the silicone I have takes like 24 hours to fully cure. We'll check back in tomorrow. But I think it's only that black piece on the seams where the seams meet. So, I don't know. I don't know. Here we go. The silicone ended up doing the trick and fixed all my problems. There were zero leaks. I added multiple layers of poly to the entire build, including the studs to make sure this entire thing was waterproof, especially under the sink for condensation issues. I added a layer of black paint as well. I think I ended up doing four coats total around the entire build. Ended up throwing on some hardware to finish off a little bit of the other stuff. And then I screwed the black walnut slab to the build and the structure itself so it doesn't go anywhere. I'm not sure how much you guys could see, but the black walnut slab is a little bit too thin. With the black walnut piece of wood pushed up against the wall, there was a huge gap to where you could see in between the studs and inside that draw. It was a pretty big, large gap, so I needed to put something behind the black walnut slab and I decided to kind of make use out of the you know time and the space in that area so I spent some time constructing a couple pieces of wood to make up a flip up section that goes behind it kind of like the backsplash but make it so that there's storage in it that took me a couple of days because the original goal was to wrap that used metal that we didn't end up using and make it out of metal but that didn't work and then I ended up getting some of this sticky fabric stuff that you can put on pretty much anything. And it just ended up looking terrible. So I spent <laughs> some more time doing that. And then eventually I just said, okay, we're just going to paint it black. So I ended up painting it black. And then it kind of turned into something from nothing. And then that brings us to present day after all of our hard work. I'm pretty sure we are done. A lot happened off camera that was added, but for the most part, that brings us to present day. Finally, after three long, hard weeks of waking up before the sun's up and leaving way after the sun is down, so many hours every single day, I can finally sit here and say, the new luxury truck camper kitchen in my Project M four-wheel camper is done. Fully complete, folks. Fully complete. I'm not sure how much was shown with the process of putting this black walnut slab as a countertop, but once we gave it a straight edge, it wasn't long enough and there was a huge gap to the point where you could literally see inside this draw right here. So I needed to come with a backup plan, but I didn't want to just throw some two by fours back here and then take up a bunch of space when it could be storage. So I got a little crafty took multiple days to kind of come up with how I wanted it to look because I, at first I wanted it to match the sink and the silver aspect of it. And I tried wrapping it in metal, which is way out of my comfort zone and it just did not go well. And then I tried using some metallic wrap and it just kind of looked like duct tape and it didn't look good at all. So I ended up just putting a coat of the same black that I use on everything else on this, built a couple hinges, bought a couple hinges my apologies did not build a hinge and um without further ado this is actually one of the most important pieces of the build and it kind of just came on a whim i tried to set everything up as how it will be when i'm on the road and on trips so it lifts up oops it's locked right now i put a lock on it for when i'm driving <laughs> hold on you unlock it you lift up and it is filled on this side all spices then on this side a garbage bag a sponge um some tums super glue foil a charger just kind of the random side and then this is the most important side with all the spices for cooking with all of the hard work to preserve the live edge on the black walnut slab i thought it'd be kind of cool to put these uh, they're fake, but they're fake leaves just to kind of match the aesthetic of the fact that the live edge is still here with the tree, branches, leaves. I just thought it looked really cool. Um, and it doesn't really get in the way of this lift up. 
portion of the build so I, I like it a lot it just kind of adds a little bit of character to it um, but yeah the live edge holding up really really well all the poly and the epoxy on this thing I think we did an incredible job and obviously I did it with a lot of help as well but it turned out beautiful you come over here to the second part of the build with storage in it this right here is filled with pretty much everything I need for pots pans and there's a lot that can fit in here it shocked me my cutting boards in here cups bowls plates everything fit in here perfectly I'm still shocked. That's a lot of stuff that fits in this one single storage cabinet, draw, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it's on the draw slides as well. Puts in, comes out, super nice, super easy. And it fits a lot of stuff. It fills the entire black walnut slab countertop. Just, yeah, it's awesome. There's a lot of room in this thing. Now we're moving on to a little bit more of the part that gave me the most headache. But this is on a magnet right here, the actual faucet itself. So all I have to do, it's a little inconvenient, but again, it's kind of what you got to do. It's not a real kitchen. So, you know, you got to make some sacrifices. And one of the sacrifices is you have to do this. Oh no to be able to open and close the draw. And this one holds everything I could possibly need for cooking, really, like spoons, knives, forks, little baby rolling pin if I wanna do some baking, tongs, just all that sort of stuff. Utensils and accessories are in this draw right here. Now it's time to get into what gave me the most headache. I've never put a sink together or did any sort of plumbing like that before. So this was unique, different, hard, but a very awesome challenge. This is the sink area. This is not the first sink we ended up going with. I had a lot of issues with finding a very small sink in order to fit in the camper because I can't have just a massive, you know, one of those big barn sinks, which would be really cool, but very unrealistic. Uh, so with some searching we found this one super super small and i put in some clear caulking all around it i'll put up what i used on the screen i don't remember the name of it but i used stuff that was actually meant for sinks so that was really cool you can't really see it in certain lighting you might be able to see the caulk which is exactly what i wanted i didn't want there to be like a big white beam around it so i went with clear and you can barely see it which is awesome this is the teak wood that I ended up using for that table over there as well. I broke four pieces of this teak wood. Do the math on how much this is times that by four. <sighs> yeah, broke a lot of pieces of teak during this project, but it's fine. I got my two favorite pieces of wood, teak and black walnut. So super happy with that. I was really, uh, I was kind of a snob with what type of wood I was picking because I knew I really wanted black walnut and teak and I wasn't going to change my mind. So we got both. And here is the brain for the sink. All the mechanics is under here. I got this big piece of hardwood. Just we don't want this opening at all while we're driving. There's going to be the gray water and fresh water tank in here. So you don't want that opening and spilling made sure that this was very secure open that up this is the gray water tank that is the fresh water tank this put me through hell and back it was a massive headache but everything is perfect plumbing worked out we're good and then that's the fresh water tank and i'm going to show you guys how the sink works because it's kind of cool a little weird unique but it's really cool so let's hop into that it's a little weird, but this is our faucet and it needs to be charged. It's fully charged right now, so we should be good for a very long time. But it's gonna be weird when I have to say that my faucet died 
and I have to charge my faucet, but hey. Basically, it's gonna sound weird for a second because I drained all the water out of the pipes because it is winter. Um, so let the pipe, I'm gonna let the water kind of get in there first. All I do is press this button right here. That's it. That's literally it. That is the sink right there. It's gonna be a game changer just being able to wash dishes, wash my hands, fill up Sky's dog bowl just by a press of a button. That's it. And it's a pretty strong pressure system. I didn't expect so much water to come out at once, but it does great. I really, really like this thing so far. And I know this is the sink area and this is teak wood. I made sure to put about 16 coats of poly on it. So it is completely waterproof. You can see that the water will just bead off and go into little beads. just like that. It's not actually, all you do is just wipe it off. It is completely coated. The wood is completely protected. I wanna make sure I touch base on everything. I feel like I'm going to forget stuff. So drop comments down below if you want. I did add a layer of epoxy or poly, excuse me, on every inch of the build, even on the studs itself. Everything is water sealed. If you're curious, this is the stuff that I used. I went through pretty much an entire can of this. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily the best of the best, but it's just what I felt like would work the best because it's for exterior and interior wood surfaces. Which even if you feel like a uh, part of your build doesn't need it, when building something for a camper, whether you like it or not, there is going to be condensation and you just always have to keep that in mind um, that condensation is not really your friend. So put water protector product on every piece of wood, please. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. I already kind of touched base with this, I believe with you guys, but this is not going anywhere, sadly. I did want to put it on the floor, but it didn't work out. So we kind of had to work around it, which is a-okay. Um, it looks fine honestly kind of makes it feel like more of a camper than a kitchen which i actually really like but this right here as you can see something's plugged in right now and that's because we are 90 percent done with the diesel heater massive shout out to peter for helping on the side i've been so busy with this i haven't even touched the diesel heater and he's been so amazing and helping me there's like two more steps left until the diesel heater is complete which is right behind me i'm currently running my propane heater because it's been so cold every day that i worked on the build that heater has been going and it's saved me but right here my diesel heater my diesel heater one cool thing about this diesel heater is in here let me unlock this because I don't know why I locked it again. Open this up. I don't know where I put it. There we go. Right here. This is a remote, <laughs> remote controlled diesel heater. It is a beaut. Okay, I don't know why it's not turning on. It's all plugged in. Huh. Maybe not the following bit video, but hopefully the video after that. Um, the diesel heater will be complete soon and we will no longer be dealing with propane. I've been trying to get a diesel heater for the past four years, so it feels really good to at least have one in here and it's almost done. So that's incredible. Thank you, Peter. This is a piece of teak wood, if you guys remember the last table. I really just wanted to match everything as best as possible and the first part of the build process that we posted over a month ago i believe at this point was building out the toilet area the storage area and kind of like a seating area as well and it came out amazing but it just the color that we went with did not match the kitchen at all so i ended up painting it completely black and it looks so good the before and after is it's so cool to look at it's crazy to sit here and say the kitchen's finally done after the countless hours put into it, but I know that you guys are going to be coming to the shows and seeing me, so I need to make sure that, uh, you know, it's up to par and it looks good for you guys to come meet me and the camper and Sky. 
I do want to update you guys. The Connecticut show is no longer happening. It's happening. I just won't be at that show anymore. Um, I'm going to be posting it on Instagram. So follow me on Instagram if you're curious about going to any of these shows. I know that the New England Fishing Expo and the New Hampshire Fishing Expo are still 100% a go and we're good on that. But Connecticut is no longer happening. I'm not sure what happened and what made it fall through, but that's okay. Things happen. Uh, but I know I got comments about people excited about the Connecticut show. I was too, but I'm sorry. It's kind of, it's out of my, my grab, my reach. It's, it's out of my zone. It, <clears throat> Anyways, the camper is looking beautiful. Any questions, comments, concerns, drop them down below. In no way, shape, or form am I a professional, but... Uh, it turned out way better than I could have ever imagined. There's so many little details that I'm just so proud of. Next episode, we're camping and we're going to be using the kitchen and utilizing the heck out of it. And I'm so excited. Thank you guys for all the love and support because without you guys supporting this channel, I would have never had the guts to get up one day and just start this build. So thank you for everything. Four wheel campers, I love you guys. And I can't wait to show up to the shows and the expos in this rig because she's looking really nice. But that's all I got for you guys. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Literally could not thank you guys enough and everyone that's helped me um, in the last couple months enough. And I, I don't know. Look, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Look forward to the future content in this thing. We're making this thing a real, real unbelievable rig. So that's all I got. I'll catch you beautiful people on the next one.